Let's talk about ramps, or as they're sometimes called, speed bumps or humps. I'm going to explain most of the different types of speed bumps that you'll face out there on the road, and I'm going to offer you some advice on how you can handle these in a safe, practical, and effective way. Now, in general, think of the 220s if you're in doubt. That means slow down to approximately 20 kilometers and get to second gear about 20 meters or so before the ramp. That's just general advice now because it's always going to depend on the ramp and it's always going to depend on the individual situation. Now, we're going to talk about the different types of ramps right now, and we're going to start with this ramp here, which is technically called a speed bump. These are often made from a plastic or a rubber substance, and they regularly have yellow and black markings on them as well in order to highlight them and make them stand out. They are usually used in car parks, private roads, and in housing estates from time to time. They do require a significant reduction in speed. Usually you'd want to be doing it in about first gear, maybe seven, 10 kilometers per hour, depending on the speed bump. So here now I'm getting the second gear. Um, before I hit the speed bump up here, you can see the yellow and black making it stand out. Um, it highlights itself on the road. So I'm going to slow, I'm at 20 now, I'm just slowing right down, clutch in. I'm going to first gear, I'm about nine or 10 kilometers now, seven kilometers now, nice and slowly over that, and off I go again then. So as you can see, those speed bumps are, there is quite a connection when the front wheels um, hit them there. They do necessitate a quite a sudden and sharp slowdown in speed. That's why it's better to slow right down there um, to get it done in first gear. And I was probably doing about between seven, eight, nine kilometers per hour as I was going over that speed bump there because it's such a it's such a sharp rise it's, it's such a significant uh, bump there next we have speed humps these are what you're probably more used to looking at when you're driving they're probably the most common types of ramps out there these are larger bumps that stretch the whole width of the road or at least almost the whole width of the road as i said they're all different each situation is unique Generally speaking, the speed humps blend in really well with the road in comparison to the speed bumps. You'll often see these shark's teeth on the approach. This is to make them stand out and to help you see the speed hump a little bit earlier and a little bit better. I'll be coming down here now to a more regular speed hump here where the traffic lights are. And it's going to be a big enough size speed hump but not that big that i need to slow down to first gear so i'm just checking my mirrors now before i slow down about 20 meters or so here now in second gear so i'm off the clutch now about 15 or meters or so before going on about 20 kilometers there now bit of a rise down i come then and back up then to 23 28 etc so that's i did that there just kind of a, a, at approximately 20 kilometers per hour and i slowed down about 15 to 20 meters beforehand that gives me time to put the clutch in and come off the clutch slowly so i have a smooth transition there so we're going to have a few ramps up here now as well, a few humps. First of all, we have the pedestrian crossing there, which we'll deal with first. So at the moment, I'm going about 38. I'm just going to gently let her slow down now. I'm just going to brake slightly, get the second gear here about 15 meters before the uh, bump. And I'm going about 22 kilometers now, slowly 21, 22. And over I go then back up to 24, 27. So that's typically what you do there for the uh, speed hump like that, which often doubles up as a pedestrian crossing, as you can see slow down and down to about 21 kilometers or so another ramp here and um, speed hump as you can see the shark's teeth there the white triangles highlighting it so i'm just going to slow down gently now the second gear about now again i'm going about at this moment i'm going about 24 25 over we go 23 no problem there's another one up there now it's perfectly fine for me to get to third gear now i'm not going to stay in second gear the whole way up along here because that wouldn't be very efficient it wouldn't be good for the gears i'm going to get up the gears and then get back down so again i'm going to slow down gently uh, about now go to second gear about 15 20 meters i'm just going a little bit slower here for the car not excessively slow though 19 20 kilometers and off i go another ramp up there now as well um again i'm going to get to third gear no higher than third but i'm not i'm certain i'm not going to stay in second gear anyway and again i'm going to slow down gently um tap the brake second gear there now about 15 meters beforehand and right now i'm going 22 kilometers over the ramp off I go then back up to 27, 30. So in that case, it was perfectly fine there for me to get up the gears and then get back down because the distance between the ramps was big enough for me to do that. Next, we have speed cushions. 
These are technically speed humps, but they're broken up into one or more smaller units. So they could come in ones, twos or threes. The reason they don't extend the full width across the road or the full width across the lane is to allow emergency vehicles and larger vehicles with wider axles to pass over them without slowing down or braking too hard. These probably don't have the same impact as the speed humps or the speed bumps, and they usually require drivers to have a more gradual slowdown. As a driver, you need to react by slowing down and not making any dramatic attempt to avoid these speed cushions. Remember, these are hazards and you have to react to the hazard by making a note of it and slowing down accordingly. So soon then we're going to see a cushion ramp down here, so-called because they kind of resemble a cushion in terms of their appearance. And they're designed to be slightly wider than the average width of a car, therefore causing the car to slow down and react in some way. So you'll see the little white triangles there now. I'm already in target, so I'm just going to stay in target here. I'm going to straddle both sides of the ramp, stay in central on about 25 kilometers. So I was about 35, 36, I slowed down to 25 going over it. So probably a little tiny bit faster than, than I might go over the average speed hump. But still, I reacted, I slowed down as most drivers would to that cushion ramp there as I should. The next type of ramp is this one here. These are known as speed tables. These are speed humps that have a longer and flatter top. They can be used at or near a junction, especially if it involves facilitating a pedestrian crossing in the same area. Speed tables are easier for larger vehicles to get over and they don't have the same impact as speed humps or speed bumps. They require vehicles to have a more gradual slowdown, which is going to suit the larger vehicles anyway. Before roundabouts, the speed tables can improve visibility as drivers will be a little more elevated as they're waiting, thereby helping them to see a little bit better. Plus, traffic on the opposite side will see you in a slightly better way and they may see you a little bit sooner as well because you're elevated from their point of view. So overall, speed tables can be useful in terms of pedestrian safety and it can improve driver's visibility slightly. So very soon now I'm going to have the table ramp that I was talking about. It's just down there where the flashing lights are, before the lights, sorry, before the white car. So I'm kind of aware of it. I can see the white little triangles there. They're the shark's teeth that highlight the ramp. That lets, lets me know it's there. So I'm slowing down, getting into the second gear now. I'm going about 25 kilometers an hour now. And I rise up. I can maintain a steady pace here. And I'm just going to slow it down again here, make sure there's no one crossing. I'm still around 24, 25. And now I'm off the table ramp. So that's a kind of a, a longer ramp. Um, doubles up as a pedestrian crossing, more elongated there, and as I was saying, more suitable for larger vehicles there. But you have to remember that it comes down as well. What goes up must come down, so make sure that you are aware and that you adjust your speed um, for the table ramp. If you have any doubts or questions about speed bumps or ramps in your area, then send me a picture to the following email, daintai at gmail.com and I'll do my best to clarify your questions. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and I'll be back very soon with another driving lesson video. Thanks for watching, Slan Tamo.